He's the slick talking, jive walking, banana eating, your favorite morning host host. The host with the most bananas. It's the one and only Adam Josh. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the morning banana show. It is September the 14th. It's a Saturday, it is early morning here. The sun is rising on my bananas. And our bananas, really, because I've named some of these bananas after you guys. As example, as an example, this is uh, Devani. And there's a little baby down there. Little baby's name is Dahlia. You probably know why. Over here, we have Banana Bill. And then we have Little Kim, which is... Little Kim, look at this leaf. Little Kim, you are impressing us. She is growing. And... Uh, Little Kim has a baby as well, which we've named her husband's name, Keith. And then a bunch of vetiver around me. You might see behind me uh, some gray water. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna grab a coffee. I have yogurt, banana coffee. This is the vegan brand of uh, natural yogurt. I put some jam in there and some oats. So we're going to have that. If you follow me on X, you might be seeing me talk about mixing Evu extra virgin olive oil or Evu omega-3 fatty acids and ACV. I've been doing this all in one shot off and on for years. Um, there's no particular reason. I think when I was thinking about, I don't, I don't normally think about topics for the morning banana show. I just kind of go with it. No script. That's how we do over here. I mean, I am love. I am creativity. I am so many different things. I don't need to worry about scripts. People who aren't those things need to worry about that. But I've been having this for a while. We'll do this shot. Not right now. I would like a sip of coffee first. I know you were thinking about it. We'll just leave it. We're going to leave it right down by the bananas. Circle back to that. Uh, regular old... I think this is Italian dark roast coffee in a French press. Made with... Um, hot bottled water. Bottled water that I boiled. Again, folks, you love the morning banana show and you keep watching because you know I'm half asleep. And having my first coffee that's the fun of it to me at least i am not coherent in the morning talk about making your weaknesses your strengths i've i am not not a morning person i have hated in the past having conversations before noon i've i am famous famously i've, I've said i don't want to have any serious conversations before noon this is um vanilla Soy milk, I believe, just from Aldi or Lidl. It's just like store brand. But look at that. We have made a latte just like that. And all I did was whisk it with that Ikea whisker. Whipper? Whisker doesn't sound right. It sounds like a cat whisker. They're eating the cats. They're eating the dogs. I really don't want to talk about eating the cats and eating the dogs right now. I'm a vegan. These are vegan problems. These are not vegan problems, rather. I feel like this is a... Uh, Elwood dog meat has it right. Molly from Elwood dog meat has it right. Because this is really a vegan opportunity. I'm not going to talk about that. You're trying to suck me into politics first thing in the morning. I haven't even had a banana. This is a banana from Adara. So I try really hard to get local bananas. Until these ones produce fruit. You've been watching the Morning Banana Show with me. And you can see how they've been growing, right? You've been here with me. They're growing, but I haven't seen any fruit yet. And we're told that they will produce fruit. So I'm, I'm confident and I, I have not lost hope. Quite the opposite. They keep growing. And we've planted more. I have a whole banana circle here, as some of you may know. So things are looking up as far as the banana circle goes. Let's take a bite. So until my banana circle comes through with some bananas, we're buying them.
I would like. Oh, so for those of you who actually watched the Morning Banana Show, on the uh, last one, yeah, I was in Lisbon. I was at the embassy uh, on business and whatnot. And then um, we decided to hit up, hit up a couple of vegan restaurants. If you follow my ex account, you'll see the food that I had at the vegan restaurant called A26. Adam, 26th of October. It's your boy. October's very own. Just a coincidence. My whole life is a bunch of coincidences, right? It's a good latte. Could be a bit stronger. I might add a bit more of that coffee. I had one too many espressos at A26. I'll tell you that. Here we go. Let's do the shots. 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 Shots to the gut for longevity. We're going to talk about longevity. So, I was into longevity and living as long as I possibly could before I even heard of Brian Johnson. So, if you follow my ex account, adamjosh.com, you might see me occasionally trolling Brian Johnson, who, you know, like many other millionaires, at some point they realize that a hedonistic lifestyle carnival lifestyle uh is not and, and the grind culture is not doing them any favors so at some point you might be might have heard of this long, longevity a lot of millionaires uh, and billionaires start thinking about living forever I want to talk about so many different things, but I feel like I have 10 minutes. I'll try to pack as much as I can into these morning banana shows for you so they're vitamin rich content. And by the way, I appreciate you watching the morning banana show. I turn my comments off on all of my videos. There's nothing against you. I don't have the mental capacity and the, um, it's not good for my mental health to, to have the comments on, on all of my videos. That's just something that I've recognized in myself so a long time ago. So I don't have comments on all my videos. You can feel free to upload these videos to your own channel. And people do take my videos and re-upload them and have comments on. I don't care. But on my own personal channel, I look at what I'm doing as like a piece of um, artwork or like a project of Adam Josh, you know. And uh, I don't want... Uh, random, you know, first, second, you know, trolling comments on my art, under my art. So that's just how I feel. And I also don't feel like I want to police um, YouTube comments. When YouTube has, um, other than given, giving me this platform to talk to you, I've not received any financial reimbursements. So it's like, it's not really a fair exchange if I'm constantly on YouTube all the time. I, I don't even like editing videos. I might edit this video to turn the volume up and add my credits on the bottom somewhere, but but that's it. <clears throat> so I appreciate you watching, and if you want to send me a comment, you can send it to adam at adamjosh.com. You can follow me on X and send the comments that way. And that's if you have any questions or comments. Like, you know, I've, we've, been, we've been out here, you know, living off grid for a while. On that note, we have uh, a fellow Canadian who we met while we were at the embassy uh, who, you know, I guess had fallen on some hard times. People go to the embassy for a variety of reasons. One common thing that we've seen while we're at the embassy is that people have lost their ID. A lot of the times it's drunk tourists or shenanigans, basically. You're drunk and you lost your passport in a taxi cab. That happens. And so a lot of times it's that. We met this lady. Now she wants to come stay on the farm. Sometimes meeting the right person, like seeing a, a guy like a, a guy like me and my family, I was with the kids and Desiree, can renew your hope in humanity. I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but I don't have any hope for humanity. My only hope for humanity is the vegan community.
So I, I'm doing the thing that gives me hope for humanity. Got one of Desiree's hair here in this yogurt. Somebody was in here in the middle of the night. I deal with that, boys. I deal with her random hairs. Sure as crap ain't mine. So, let's try this yogurt thing. I, uh... I wanted to talk about longevity. Longevity is like the, the millionaires, you know, and billionaires have decided we want to live forever. That's what kind of like, what transhumanism is all about, right? Is man's desire to live as long as man possibly can. So man turns to technology and asks technology to help. And before you say that I'm a transhumanist, as a slur, Keep in mind, um, all procedures that you've had, all like dental procedures, uh, returning veterans with injuries who get bionic limbs, that's all transhumanism. So a lot of us are transhumanists and we just don't know it at heart. The thing is, there's a line that gets crossed, right? One of, the, one of the lines that gets crossed in transhumanism is uploading your consciousness in an effort for your consciousness to live forever in this three-dimensional plane and maybe downloaded later into robots or avatars or Cylons, Cylon, Cylon versions of yourself. Homie, don't play that. It's no secret. My whole trip is I don't want to reincarnate and I don't want to stay perpetually alive in a Cylon body. That is not going to stop the billionaires and the millionaires and the elite of the world and the Asians in back rooms from doing exactly that. So it's happening. I think this is where Brian Johnson, Elon Musk, Zoltan Ishvan, um, the Russian oligarch guy from 20, Project 2045. I think this is the conclusion they've come to. Is like, look, you want to stop technology? It's happening, boys. This is happening in the future. We're going towards that future. And I am confidently saying to you from the mountains of Portugal, we're going towards that future of, you know, transhumanism, digital uh, consciousness downloaded into Cylon bodies, into Optimist-style robots, or better. Um, I've been saying it for a long time, and uh, I'm still saying it. I started talking about uh, artificial intelligence back in, like, the early 2000s. So, you, we, can, we can argue about it. That doesn't change the fact. Like, it's not me and you that are coding these things and making these uh, technological advancements. So it's not really up to us. We can just complain or not complain. Same about immigration, right? People talk about immigration like they have any control over immigration. Politicians complain about immigration and you're like, wait a minute. If you're using immigration as like a political soapbox and you don't have any power over immigration, then wait a minute. <laughs> Who does? If one person said, I want to stop globalism and stop people from immigrating all over the world and companies from going all over the world and monopolizing, it's like, bro, it's too late. <laughs> that ship sailed. But it's good for politics, good for political points. What a beautiful morning. I have been noticing some chemtrails lately between me, you and me, like an uptick. Oh, and chemtrails exist now. Yeah, ABC News. Uh, cloud seeding geoengineering uh, exists now. I've only been talking about it since 2006, 2007. You can look at all my timestamp stuff on my website or on uh, YouTube. But now after 20, almost 20 years of me talking about it, it exists for the normies. So 
Welcome to my world, almost 20 years later. Cloud seeding has been going on since freaking Vietnam War, you know. But Ben Livingston, the father of um, geoengineering, you can look it up, weather weapons. Um, if the future is going all digital and batteries are going to be super power, super important, and Elon Musk is making these... Um, crypto mining rigs slash XAI brains. He's not going to tell you what he's really up to. Keep in mind, this is the founder of PayPal, right? The guy who invented uh, X.com, uh, Xbit, Paybit, whatever it was called. Bit, bit, send, go, bit. I'll figure it out. Doesn't matter. Uh, he coded what became PayPal. And this guy is obviously wants to have X.com be the everything app. So just FYI. The crypto mining slash XAI brain rigs that he's making in Texas are not just for artificial intelligence. Don't be silly. And I've been predicting this forever, that we are going to build the hive mind for Lucifer. We're building the hive mind for the beast system. And the, one of the first things it's going to do is take over all our finance, uh, digital currency, or at least try to. Computer says no worldwide. <laughs> Oh, you want to uh, you want to leave the country? Computer says no worldwide. Oh, you want to buy diapers for your child? Computer says no worldwide. Computer says no. You want some money? Computer says no. Worldwide, baby. So this is a real problem. Uh, and um, you know, if you think I'm joking, I mean, look at China. We have the same type of social credit score here, just implemented in different ways, but. Um, in the future, people are going to be putting solar panels everywhere. I have solar panels. So let me tell you about some, speaking uh, in some type of authority of somebody who actually has solar panels. I'm literally off the grid on our farm, off the grid and still powering all our devices and fridges and whatnot. If it's common sense, right? But like if you have, for example, a hundred watt solar panel, what that means is at peak output, at peak output, when the sun is directly overhead, it's it can generate 100 watts. These are ideal circumstances. This is boring as hell, but follow along. The sun on flat Earth is out of your optical point of view. It's far away. It's like at the end of a long hallway. And slowly, it comes into view over your geographic location, right? while it's on its circuit. And in that point, people um, rightly do a, a graph that goes like this. The sun for peak hour or peak usage is going up and then down like that. Sunset, sunrise, sunset. You follow? Peak usage, like 11 to 2 p.m. So in that range of 11 to 2 p.m. up here at the top of the chart, that's your peak output of your solar panel. So if it says 100 watts, that's when you're getting 100 watts. I also have been monitoring amps, uh, so 100 watts, 220 volts, or 100, uh, 100 watts at um, 12 volts DC, and if you convert that into amps at peak, maybe I get 17 somewhere, I've almost hit 20, but I have breakers that would trip, I've never tripped a breaker, they're 20 amp breakers. I'm talking input, 17 amps at peak usage, but it trails off, and at the end of the day, I'm talking like... 0.5. So right now, where we're like getting towards the beginning of uh, beginning of the peak, in amps, as far as like a charging cycle goes, which is completely dependent on the sun being in the right spot, I might be getting. I think before I came out here, I checked it was uh, 10 amps. So at peak peak usage, like I was saying, 17 amps would be like the crescendo of summer, and then it trails off through the day. If you're not capturing that in batteries. Solar panels aren't batteries, you know, so um, once the sun sets, your electricity would be gone. Smart people are capturing the electricity in batteries and good batteries that can last for the night, right? The night is however long the night is, back until the sun comes up again, right? Eight hours, 12 hours. Here, the sun works overtime, so night is not that long. Ideally, your batteries last through the night, and then in the morning, they're recharged again, and the whole cycle continues indefinitely. 
the reason I'm even talking about this is because cloud seeding, geoengineering, stratospheric high altitude engineering, whatever you want to call it, we know what we're talking about. Not condensation that rapidly dissipates. I have a clear blue sky today. I don't know when the, I'll show you this at the end of the video. The clear blue sky. I don't know when the last time you saw a clear blue sky is. That's the norm here in Portugal, clear blue skies. It is not the norm where I'm from in Niagara, so I can tell you that firsthand. So stratospheric geoengineering, uh, cloud seeding, if you put anything, like anything in between that peak of when the sun is above your head, if you put anything like a cloud, your hand, <laughs> uh, if your solar panels are on your roof and you put a blanket over them, you understand what I'm saying? You reduce your overall potentiality, your overall electrical output ability. And even if it's by a little bit, sometimes that little bit is noticeable. So for example, when we're overcast here, my amp, my amps in, like my amps charging get cut drastically, sometimes by half or more. UV radiation still slips through the clouds, obviously, but like, in a future where you're relying on solar panels for electricity, just keep this in the back of your mind, that what's happening in Dubai where they flooded the town, they flooded Dubai accidentally because of geoengineering and cloud seeding. In that case where, you know, Joe Blow, backyard Muhammad guy with his solar rig was living off grid, while it was overcast, he was noticing that he wasn't getting as much watts into his batteries, which would lead to uh, his batteries being de dead, a blackout, and uh, not able to run his gear. And in the future, you know, when we're talking about weather wars or weather weapons, you kind of can't have it both ways, right? So if you want solar panels in the future, you have to, to rein in this geoengineering solar uh, radiation cloud seeding program. And I'm talking to people like me who think just clear headed, I'm not talking to the normies right now. Like you have to pick your battles. Do you want solar panel technology and wind and all that? Alternative energy sources? Um, or, you know, don't you? Because geoengineering or cloud seeding is, is really going to mess up um, solar panel output. So something to keep in mind. Another thing that I noticed that I have to, cl cl I have to clean my solar panels here because we get um, uh, Sahara from the north... Um, from Africa, we get like Sahara dust storms here in southern Portugal, which is really funny. So like, I'll have dust all over my solar panels. And again, if I don't clean it, I notice that my amps and overall watts going in to my batteries are reduced. It makes sense. But what I'm saying is if you're already struggling for solar panel electricity, like the last thing you need to do is put blankets over your solar panels or dark clouds. So ideally you have skies like I have here all the time, all the time. <laughs> it's like... 300 days of sun with all that being said uh, i hope that you have a great day looking for my coffee thank you for following the morning banana show sorry i was ranting there about longevity and uh solar panels it's just food for thought you know i knew that i was right for 20 something years you know it's not like I suddenly, I, I don't feel anything about being vindicated or not vindicated. Um, you know, if you're the one-eyed person in a room full of blind people, it's not some great gift to see. But if you see a freight train coming at your neighbor's house and you go warn him, it's not some great blessing that you have eyes to see the freight train coming for your neighbor's house. It's like almost a curse, right? Because you feel obligated to tell people. So I feel sometimes like a light uh, and I don't hide my light because it's ridiculous to put your light under covers or on the bottom of an ocean. You put your light so people can, it benefits people. You know, sometimes, and I have people reach out to me and thank me just for being me and being like helping them to walk through things. I'm no fap, vegan of 11 years. 
I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, I don't secretly do drugs, I don't secretly drink, I don't secretly watch porn, and I don't secretly fap. My worst habits are this, whatever this is, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, and coffee and uh, caffeine. I have a little bit too much caffeine sometimes. Uh, yeah. So, if you want to support me, you can buy a t-shirt. I have uh, the Do Not Reincarnate t-shirts on my website. Uh, there's links under this video, probably. Uh, you can send me an e-transfer to adam at adamjosh.com. You can meditate with us at 11.11. Very important to meditate every day. Center yourself, ground yourself. Not everybody can be in the midst of banana palms in Portugal. One day, they're going to give us fruit. One day, you'll see. Thanks for following me, everybody. Take care of yourselves. I hope that you have a great day and that you get everything that you want out of this life. Ring it for all that it's worth. I believe in you. Take care. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Are you tired of reincarnating? Me too. Now show the world that you don't want to reincarnate with this Do Not Reincarnate t-shirt.